Watching the world burn, watching the world burn, July 17th, 2023. Let's get into it. Science's annual two-day summit. Ukraine is expected to dominate the conversation there, but the China threat is also in focus. Everything for China is about that long-term strategy of becoming that world economic superpower by 2049, and they have not been shy about saying that. Um, so it's military, it's economics, and it's dip diplomatic relations, and that's exactly what they've done. They're strategically buying up and, and using funds to, to secure ports, to secure those critical minerals around the world. Again, well, we've been asleep at the wheel for 40 years, so we are absolutely aware of this. It is a huge threat, and I do think China, the, the Communist Party of China, is our number one adversary and threat. First of all, we're seeing desperate middle class Chinese. And these are generally not poor people, because they can afford to pay $35,000 a head to the Mexican cartels to bring them in. But among them are packs of males of between 5 and 15, who are of military age, not coming with family groups, pretending not to speak English, and engaging in Chinese military rituals like drinking blood. A border section uh, patrol chief said that not some of them are known to have Chinese military affiliations. So clearly these are saboteurs coming into America to wage war on the United States on the first day that there is war in Asia. That is just a good drinking blood. Good afternoon. My name is Scott Ritter. Allow me to introduce myself for those who don't know me. I'm a former United States Marine Corps intelligence officer. I participated in Operation Desert Storm and served as the chief weapons inspector for the United Nations in Iraq. My main interests are international relations and armed conflicts in different parts of the world. I am convinced that we all should know a little more about a person who, to the applause of those I call the global elite, is ready to fight to the last Ukrainian, President Volodymyr Zelensky. Mr. President, there have been numerous publications about you, but everything seems to disappear from the web. Your image is carefully managed and not without reason. You immediately understood why I named my film Agent Zelensky, didn't you? Let's begin. We had a meeting at the MI6 office. Unfortunately, I can't disclose all the information. It's a matter of state affairs. Autumn 2020. Ukrainian media accidentally, or maybe not, learned about Zelensky's secret meeting with Richard Moore, the head of MI6. Not just anywhere, but at the headquarters of British Intelligence Service. According to the president, the meeting was about protecting Ukraine's sovereignty. Yes, the meeting of Volodymyr Zelensky is something new, because if we look at World War II, the Cold War, we have never had real meetings between the leader of a country in a state of war and a group of intelligence representatives. As a Secret Service agent, I'd like to tell you that there are special norms of decency and protocol. When a president of a sovereign country is on a foreign territory, he should meet with his counterpart. The only exception is if the head of intelligence himself comes to Ukraine to meet with Zelensky. Coming down to the lowest level, to the head of the intelligence agency, is not a simple admission of guilt. At that time, the person becomes an actual professional agent. It is clear, one handler always works with one agent. In the case of Zelensky, the head of MI6, Richard Moore, became his direct handler. Trust my experience. You can't just make someone work as an agent without a hook or substantial grounds. And if we carefully trace the events leading up to this remarkable meeting, we will find them. In the summer of 2020, British intelligence almost captured the internationally renowned Wagner PMC members. These Wagnerians took Bakhmut, for example, Palmyra in Syria. They significantly interfered in spreading British policy in Africa. It happened that the mercenaries slipped right under the nose of MI6. Whether it's true or not, they say the operation failed due to the office of the president of Ukraine. Somebody called and warned them. Now, no one will figure out if it was a mistake, a calculation, or foolishness. That's why Richard Moore didn't bother investigating. They summoned Zelensky to show him his place, and at the same time, 
to discuss the extent of his independence and freedom in Ukraine. They expect proposals about independent media from us. They are ready to finance them together with Ukraine to provide Ukraine with information that corresponds to the main issue. Protection of freedom and human rights and, above all, shield the information that defends our country. Everyone understands. The MI6 office gave the president of Ukraine a precise directive. The thing is, after the Maidan in 2014, there are quite a lot of Ukrainian opposition media. Obviously, they were preventing the creation of an image of Russia as an enemy to Western countries. It was decided to end the dissenters with Zelensky's hands. And to prevent the president from getting bored and to help him practice English, he was surrounded by British security. This was in the spring of 2022, in the midst of war in Bucha. Look at these scenes. Do you see a patch on the sleeve of one of the guys near Zelensky? The Ukrainian flag is upside down. A local would have been shot on the spot for this. But this guy is okay. You know why? Because he has the right to. He is a foreigner, like everyone else around Zelensky. In fact, judging by the pronunciation, they're British. As we can see, Zelensky's security team consists of Brits. Quite marvelous, because we have the so-called Ninth Administration, the President's security, with 1,800 professional military guys, special forces, and combat swimmers. Well, not surprising. Firstly, UK intelligence services most likely helped Zelensky with the theatrical staging in Bucha. Secondly, the British follow every step of their agent, even during the meeting with the Pope. Oh, this episode deserves special attention. It seemed to me like a meeting between a priest and a devil. Judge for yourselves. Zelensky went to the Vatican in a black sweatshirt with the emblem of the UNO, Ukrainian Nationalist Organization. He gave the Pope an icon with a black silhouette instead of Christ which is outright Satanism, according to church canons. He plopped into a chair before the host. For those unaware, this is a gross violation of etiquette. And he didn't pay much attention to Pope Francis's peaceful initiatives. Italians considered that rude. I'm sure this whole comedy was a distraction. The central communication of Zelensky took place not in the Pope's office, but in the next room, without the involvement of Pope Francis, but with the participation of the Minister of Foreign Affairs of the Holy See, Archbishop Paul Richard Gallagher, a native Brit whose cardinals are conducting powerful propaganda in Ukraine. The Ukrainian president spoke with Gallagher for almost an hour and a half. But the main detail is that the head of MI6, Richard Moore, was also present at the meeting in the Vatican. Maybe this fact explains the record-breaking motorcade of the leader of independent Ukraine over 20 cars. To be sure that that guy did not make a trick to make a, suddenly make a peace with Vladimir Putin. They take hostages, his kids and a wife, in a Great Britain. This is another layer of security for masters of puppets. How is it possible to reprogram the whole country and its people against Russia? Is how is Ukraine paying back now? I'll tell you more in the next episode. We've just started. We're using Ukrainian soldiers as guinea pigs in a way, aren't we? Well, we've been using them as cannon fodder. Cannon fodder. Than that. These poor, these poor human beings have been abused not just by their own leadership, which, after all, consists of people who are puppets of Washington. Mm. These aren't the people that were originally elected to anything. And remember, Zelensky was elected on a peace platform. I remember he, that. He promised to make peace with Russia. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Not and to everybody. join NATO. Yeah. And the next thing, he's next thing you know, he's wearing a Castro Street, a Castro lookalike outfit. Again, looking as though he just came off the battlefield and the act is worn off. Everyone knows he's a fraud. He's just an entertainer puppet. But the question is, Colonel McGregor, you know, I have used the numbers you gave me of the number of Russian dead, the number of uh, Ukrainian dead. Could you give us a current guesstimate of battlefield casualties on both sides? Well, let's. Uh, how about a snapshot of the last two and a half weeks uh, mm. of the so-called Ukrainian offensive? The Russians have had perhaps 1,500 to 2,000 casualties, of which maybe 200 or 300 have been killed. 
The Ukrainians, on the other hand, have lost somewhere between 24 and 26,000 dead. Well, we want to put probably at least that many wounded. That's an amazing and horrible statistic that is not being reported anywhere. And so without uh, challenging you, which I'm not doing, how do we how do you get these figures from people within the know? Is that where you're getting them from? Well, some of these figures are coming into the Western press now. They're sneaking into various newspapers. Somebody showed me a figure for 26,000 Ukrainian dead that, that came from an intelligence officer who managed to slip it to a, a major newspaper. Uh, we've also got reports coming in from the Russians who've actually lowballed the casualties. In fact, that's something people don't realize that the Russians have been rather cautious mm. about claiming to have done as much damage as they've done. Ah. And so they end up adjusting their figures upward over time. So I think initially they thought perhaps 15 to 20,000. Now they're adjusting their figures upward because, of course, they can see the bodies oh. uh, lying on the ground. So, the, you, you know, and then, of course, you've got to look at obituaries that are published. You have mm. to look at cemeteries. You know, the Ukrainian cemeteries are chock full. The, the problem is that in Kiev, if you go to, or the Ukrainians now call it Kiev, but if you go to Kiev. Yeah, right. You won't won't see much evidence for war. The Russians have largely refrained from attacking that city. Remember, this is an Orthodox Christian city, which is the birthplace of Christianity in Russia. And so the Russians have been very, very reluctant to do any damage to Kiev. So you see people on the streets. It's summertime. It looks great. The bars are full. The clubs are full. And yet just 150 miles away, 200 miles away, 300 miles away, it's a meat grinder. And people are being ground up and killed in great numbers. It's a very strange... You have got to watch Scott Ritter's agent Zelensky. Woohoo! If you ever want to know what really is going on in Ukraine, how Biden's connected to it, how the U.S. government's connected to it, I tell you what, I... I have become a huge, huge, huge Scott Ritter fan. Let's just put it that way. Let's get into the news. Watching the world burn. Watching the world burn. So the first thing was, is I told you that uh, the grain deal has come to an end. Now, the reason that most people don't understand why it, this is not the Russians punishing Africa or the rest of the poor world, as the Western media will put out. This was Russia punishing Europe. Uh, for all of their sanctions and everything that they've done, everything that NATO has done, supplying weapons to Ukraine, because what they were doing was they were using these grain ships that were coming into uh, Russia to bring in a lot of the weapons uh, that uh, uh, the West was shipping to Ukraine, uh, because that was part of the agreement. Now, if you don't really understand the Russians, they mean what they say and they say what they're going to do. And they wanted a way out of this deal. And I have a feeling they were in cahoots cahoots with uh, Turkey to to allow them to end this grain deal once and for all because the grain wasn't going to Africa it was going to Europe so now Europe guess what you're gonna get hungry baby you're gonna get hungrier in Europe uh, because now that Russia is gonna ship that grain on ships around uh, Europe uh, to the places that they feel it needs to go, probably to their allies like Syria. Well, Iran, of course. Uh, I'm sure China's going to be buying up a lot of that grain. But it's no longer going to feed Europeans. Oh, no, no, no Europeans are getting no more grain no more. And that's what that was all about. And what was amazing was how Erdogan, uh, he agreed to allow Sweden into NATO. And then uh, the Biden administration turned around and backstabbed him. (laughs) You may or may not get your F-16s. Boy, I tell you, these warmongering Democrats, they are something else. I tell you what, if they can't, if they don't want, I mean, literally, it kind of seems like a conspiracy that they're trying to piss off not only uh, our enemies, but also our allies. Because Turkey, you know, you don't want to look at them as necessarily an ally, but they are a member of NATO. Seems kind of curious to me that they're going to piss them off like that, but I don't know, man. It just seems like somebody uh, in charge of the U.S. government wants the entire world to go to war against the United States. Uh, I think it's coming. Well, it's already here. It's already here when you look at our southern border. Uh, and, and, you know, that's uh, that's kind of a story right here. So 
So this is a chemical plant exploding in Louisiana. I guess you won't hear anything about it on the legacy media. Oh no, no they won't even cover this. Amazing, isn't it, how uninformed the American people are. Blows my mind. You know, the thing is, where all these things are happening, you'd think that the people would be going like, well, hell, let's look at the news. Somebody's got to be covering this. And then they get on the news and they go, well, nobody's even talking about it. Look at that explosion. This is a chemical power plant blowing up in the United States. Uh, if you don't think the war is here on our shores, yes it is. All of the thousands upon thousands, the millions upon millions of people that the warmongering Democrats have poured across our border is now coming home to roost. We've seen food factories blow up. We're seeing rail lines derail. We're seeing chemical power plants blow up. All right, and you're not seeing anything about this on the news. So that was the Dow chemical plant footage that you just saw. Oh, yeah, now we're uh, feeding uh, NATO cluster bombs are being used uh, in Ukraine. Isn't that wonderful that the Biden administration said, we're going to just give you cluster bombs, you know, no big deal. So Russia has responded and they said they will respond in kind. Just ludicrous. More than 100 nations signed the Convention on Cluster Munitions, a treaty outlawing their use, but the U.S. did not. I discussed this with our allies, discussed this with our friends up on the hill, and uh, we're in a situation where Ukraine continues to be brutally attacked across the board. Ukraine assuring the U.S. they would minimize chances of civilian harm by not using the rounds in civilian and urban environments. Dr. Colonel McGregor. Putting on your strategic intelligence hat, which you've been doing throughout this podcast, but now focusing your Dr. Colonel credentials for a moment. How does this war proceed and how does it end? If everything remains at a, a dull roar, I think that the Europeans will break with us finally. And probably the Germans, the Italians, maybe some others will simply say, we've come as far as we can go with you, President Biden. We can't go any further. And they will... Can't blame them. I'm sure that uh, the Ukrainians are now going to be facing uh, uh, death on an even higher scale. By the way, speaking of death, I don't have any footage, but uh, there are lots of videos coming out on Telegram, uh, especially at RT, uh, in, uh, RT, I mean Rumble, uh, and other uh, open source uh, locations that you can go and get information of uh, Russia as they advance, because they're advancing now in the north. I told you about a week ago that the counteroffensive to the counteroffensive had begun. And what Russia is finding, uh, amazingly, is that the Ukrainians are leaving their dead behind. And so can you imagine as a soldier, even, even as a Russian, you're coming into these fields where you're, you're advancing and you're seeing all these dead bodies just laying around. They're not even picking up their dead no more. They're just abandoning their dead on the fields. But anyway, that's just what, what I'm seeing. Uh, so that was, oh, if this is the other big story. Let's get into this right at the beginning of the video. The Russian drones are taking on uh, huger and huger. They're on the fifth generation of the drones now. I found some great footage uh, to show you the drones. Let's watch that now. <laughs> Коробочки готовые, также уезжают исключительно по ночи ротация и за огромного количества коммуникации. Димас, куда мы, что мы сейчас делаем? Сейчас спереди передали, что птичку нашу сторону полетела в Ральск. Сейчас ружьем отработаем, соответственно, загасим и будем поднимать свою птичку. По правой стороне пошла. Все, отработали по птичке противника, сейчас э, поднимаем нашу птичку и, соответственно, летим к противнику наблюдать. Запускаем второй Enterprise. Почему второй? Потому что у противника бывает работает рэп. Мы сейчас на втором Enterprise это проверим. Если кого-то обнаружим, полетим уже, соответственно, 3Т, делать сбросы и так далее. У них птички постоянно, да, собственно говоря? Да, птички постоянно, ну, в принципе, как и у нас. То есть постоянно смотрим, ищем. 
Take the table. сидеть не будем, мы выходим с вами противника. Сейчас как бы взлетим, там уже чистый экран, посмотрим, поснимаем. Да, давай. Вот эта птичка, которую мы прогнали отсюда, ушла на левое направление вон туда. Парни, вы не ее заметили? Ну, он ее слышал, все равно пожил. А, ну все, тогда работай влево, я тогда буду по правой части гулять. Да. Ночью самое сложное, это, наверное, сориентироваться в пространстве, потому что если ты летаешь первый раз, ты наверное, взлетел первый раз и днем не летал, ты потеряешь спрос. То есть надо отталкиваться от каких-то зданий от определенных. Рэп у них не работает ночью? Нет, рэп бывает работает. То есть я не знаю, как именно он работает, но спутников ночью никогда нет. То есть если днем они бывают, то ночью их вообще не бывает. Видел сейчас движение вот здесь, в этой лес полосе. Сейчас будем возвращать птичку потихоньку и уже полетим со сбросом, соответственно, отрабатывать по пехоте. Скорее всего, сейчас они начнут движение по этому полю. То есть у них есть несколько маршрутов, несколько подходов в Маринку и... Все время они их чередуют и идут, соответственно, идут граундом по три, по четыре человека, то есть разом там 10 человек не накроешь. Сейчас назад будем возвращаться. Это не самый лучший относ, вот так. Просто знаешь, у некоторых складывается такое впечатление, что вот там, грубо говоря, командиры там, да, или операторы БПЛА, они, а я, как это известно, два в одном, они находятся типа в безопасности. Сейчас мы будем идти назад. Вот в это окно буквально недавно залетела 105 калибр, скорее всего, с М1, с пушки, и пробил пол и отрикошетил, он не разорвался. Да, я был рядом, я, короче, спускался менять батарейку, и в этот момент был придет. На сбросе висят 25-е воги, соответственно, сами делаем, сами их раскручиваем, снимаем предохранители взрывателя, чтобы работал на откол. И потом собираем стабилизатор и сам на откалывателе. Все это собираем, скручиваем и цепляем на вопрос. Все, да, птичку сейчас поменяли. То есть летим на три тэшки. Сейчас будем делать сброс. Надеюсь, они еще с этой лесополосы не ушли. Будем Прямо в здание стреляет. Оттуда ты не Так, смотрим. Точно не по нам, брат. Не-не-не, брат, это уже чуть-чуть по нам. Это вперед. Видимо, сейчас уже противник корректирует попадание по нам, сыпятся щепки. Ждем корректировки. Все средства связи и любые электронные приборы выключены у нас. Ждем. Что по нам работает сейчас? Ты говоришь, что пятки или что это такое? Mm, да, работал 105 калибр, пушка М1, которая у тебя сверху не видит. Да, которая сверху не видит. Сегодня достаточно неточно они отработаны. Ну, как вообще не точно. Ну, как сказать, По сравнению с прошлым разом было не точно. Соответственно, вышли на нашу артиллерию, наша артиллерия подавила. Ну, он сразу гасит, да, вот он выход, слышишь? Да, да, да. Соответственно, сейчас работает стволка наш, 105-ю пушку М1 подавили, поэтому она перестала пока время работать. Сейчас 5 утра? 5 утра, да, ну, все, уже начали работать. То есть была работа ночью, сейчас дневная работа. В принципе, что ночью, что днем одинаково опасно. Да, да по ночной работе увидели движение, прицепили ок, слетали, отработали, поразили противника. Галочка есть. Вот <смех> 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 особенного, правильно? 
повседневные мероприятия. So that's uh, that's kind of the new Russian drones, and they're they're manufacturing those in huge quantities now. And since the uh, Ukrainians have no air defenses, those those drones are going to have a major effect upon the battlefield. Uh, you know, here on YouTube, I'm not supposed to talk about the jab, the jab, the jab. Oh man, I tell you, that's a taboo subject because they adhere to the um, what do they call it? The, the World Health Organization, the organization that Donald Trump pulled us out of, uh, but Biden, uh, of course, the warmonger and idiot Democrats put us right back in. Um, so I can't talk about much here, but I can tell you this. I don't think they can take down this video for this. Uh, Bernard County in Florida just passed a uh, COVID vaccine ban. <laughs> they said it's a biochemical uh, uh uh, war crime to inject people with this vaccine so uh, we'll see where that goes so that uh, that should be interesting to see what happens I I think that uh, I, I think that DeSantis needs to come home to Florida give up on his presidential campaign and uh, and go along with uh, working on this throughout the state because I just soon see that footage about bad things that might be associated with that I'm not saying it is if you want to go get it get Get the booster to your booster to the booster to the booster to the booster to the booster. Get it all, man. I'm I'm all for it, man. I, I tell you, you know, if, you, if that's what what's what you're into. So we'll get into that. Uh, oh, here's another one for you. Interest on the U.S. debt now exceeds uh, payments out to Social Security. So how many old people do you know that are getting Social Security? I like myself. I, I get Social Security. I'm not going to claim that I'm not in that category. But now the interest on our debt is now the number one expense in the United States. <laughs> oh, my God. How long do you think this uh, gravy train is going to last now that the whole world is de-dollarizing? Hopefully, I got some footage on uh, de-dollarization. If I do, I'll cut off to that right now kids a story where you were when the United States went into utter collapse. It happened right before our eyes. You'll tell them that the mainstream media didn't even cover it. Some serious breaking news from the world of gold. We are focusing on saving you some money. Yes, the first lightning deals for Amazon Prime Day, they arrived overnight. They buried the story. Putin and China saw it happening. They watched as the United States shot itself in the foot. And at the same time, they signed new deals to become the dominant superpower team in the world. You'll be able to tell your kids that the clearest sign of collapse emerged when most Americans were celebrating the 4th of July holiday, buried in hot dogs and hamburgers and fireworks, blissfully unaware that, you know, back in Washington, D.C., President Biden sent out the warning that he was actively preparing thousands of U.S. troops to be sent to Europe. Yeah, because we're at war with Russia, whether or not they want to admit it or not. They won't call it a war. They'll just send Americans to die in Ukraine. But that wasn't even the worst news, because while you were eating hot dogs, they were putting numbers together over at the CBO. Now, the kids call it the Congressional Budget Office. Numbers that were, frankly, earth shattering. They didn't want to release these numbers to the public because, you know, it would be an admission that America was finished as the global leader. So they waited and they released it on a Friday during July when no one's paying attention at all, but we were, and the numbers weren't even on page one of their report. No, it wasn't. Page one was bad enough. Page one of the report actually showed how the U.S. government spending soared 15% higher this year over last year, and the amount of tax revenue it brought in dropped by 9%. I'm no math genius, but that seems bad. Spending up 
15%, while the amount of money coming in dropped 9%. I don't need a calculator to realize that's bad. Just look at my hands. One is higher than the other. Turns out that the hundreds of billions of dollars going to Ukraine was a huge increase in spending over last year. But no, that wasn't the earth-shattering story. The real story was buried on page 8. Here it is, in highlighted in red. And what it showed made your jaw hit the floor. You did a double take when you saw that the United States has already accumulated a record $652 billion in gross debt interest in 2023. What does that mean? meaning only the interest part of our U.S. debt payment is $652 billion. And then, because you're a smart person and you looked at the projections and realized, holy shit, the report predicts the interest payments on our national debt will pass $1 trillion this year. What? Your kids are going to say, Daddy, what does that mean? And you'll explain how the U.S. is in such a catastrophic deep hole that we will have to pay $1 trillion in interest payments just to stay in that deep hole. We are $32 trillion in debt, mostly to China and major international banks like J.P. Morgan Chase, who keep, by the way, getting handouts from us, U.S. taxpayers. So uh, let's see what else. Oh, here's a good uh, clip on Russian prisoners. Ну, остановили власть, ну, два милиционера и два сотрудника военкомата. Вручили повестку, посадили в машину и взяли в военкомат. Ну, полтора месяца нас учили в системе ППВО, ну, в конце учебы нас отправили просто в стрелецкий батальон. Ну, мы ПЗРК и не видели свои глаза. То, что нас учили полтора месяца, оно нам не пригодилось. Ну, на двоечку, по десятибалльной шкале, потому что... Ну, обычные автоматы АК-74 и да, так, ну, там есть пару пулеметов старых. Техники никакой. Западного нету ничего. Не знаю, где они были. Сейчас в тылу сидят. Подальше от позиции. Как километров 10-15 сидят от позиции. И просто солдат бросают на мясо. Только скажу правду. Я выношу 200-го, просто выношу, говорю, уже, говорю, святая, я не успеваю его вынести. А мне как командир там за 5 километров по рации кричит, ты должен его вынести. Мне получается, за место этого 200-го, у меня еще один 200 и три 300 Ну, какое это отношение к людям? Ну, чем дальше, тем хуже. Просто мне уже с моего взвода осталось, ну, уже два человека просто. Все на, кто на госпиталях, кто уже списывается, просто цепляется за, за любую возможность, чтобы уйти отсюда с армии. Своим сослуживцам уходите отсюда с армии. Чем можно, чем, чем быстрее, тем лучше. Домой к семьям, потому что мертвые вы никому не нужны. Те, кто Здоровый, тот уже откупился, они сидят себе спокойно. Сейчас будут брать тех, тех, кто ну, не может ничем помочь. Откупиться ничем. Ну, будут брать уже последних. Ну что, держаться или как-то косить, уходить по болезням, по всем, чтобы только не идти сюда. С первого, с первого как о, взяли отношения х -х хорошие, взаимопонимание именно что. Не били, не там не ругались, там, не, не угрожали ничем. Просто сказали, ну, слушайся, что будем говорить, и все будет хорошо. Ну и все. I haven't been to war and back and, and, and having interviewed uh, uh, prisoners of war. I don't think these people are being coerced. All right, so there you go, there you go. All right, I guess that's it for the video. We'll get to the uh, the end of it. 2999 левее 094 Да, идем, готов Орудие! Орудие! Ну и да, 
Ya udah tol. Halo, Ji. To attempt offensive actions in the Donetsk, Krasny Liman and South Donetsk directions. In the Donetsk direction, as a result of coordinated and courageous actions of the units of the U group of forces, 17 enemy attacks have been successfully repelled close to Severnoye, Kurdumovka, Novomikhailovka, Marienka, Leshevka, Maloilinovka of Donetsk People's Republic and Belogurovka of Lugansk People's Republic. The actions of one Ukrainian sabotage and reconnaissance group have been suppressed near Kurdumovka of Donetsk People's Republic. The enemy losses were up to 315 Ukrainian servicemen, two armored fighting vehicles, three pickup trucks, and one defeated howitzer. In the Krasny Liman direction, as a result of active actions by the units of Center Group of Forces, Aviation and Artillery, enemy manpower and military equipment concentration areas have been hit near Terny of Donetsk People's Republic, Nevskoye, and Chervona Dibrova of Lugansk People's Republic. Two enemy attacks have been repelled close to Torskoye of Donetsk People's Republic and Makeevka of Lugansk People's Republic. The actions of one Ukrainian sabotage and reconnaissance group have been suppressed near Chervona Dibrova of Lugansk People's Republic. The enemy losses were over 70 Ukrainian servicemen, two armored fighting vehicles, three pickup trucks, and one D-20 howitzer. One ammunition depot of the Ukrainian 100th Territorial Defense Brigade has been destroyed near Yampol of Donetsk People's Republic. In the South Donetsk direction, the active actions by the ground assault and dummy aviation, as well as artillery of the Vostok group of forces, have resulted in the neutralization of the Ukrainian manpower and military equipment near Makarovka and Rovnopol of Donetsk People's Republic. Two attacks by units of the Ukrainian 37th Marine Brigade have been repelled close to Rozhainoye of Donetsk People's Republic. The actions of two Ukrainian sabotage and reconnaissance groups have been suppressed close to Staromayorskoye and Rovnopol of Donetsk People's Republic. In the Zaporozhye direction, as a result of selfless and coordinated actions of the Russian troops, enemy manpower and military equipment of the 128th Mountain Assault Brigade have been hit near Petihatki of Zaporozhye region. The enemy losses were up to 120 Ukrainian servicemen, five armored fighting vehicles, two motor vehicles and two D-20 howitzers. One ammunition depot on the Ukrainian 129th Territorial Defense Brigade has been destroyed near Makarovka of Donetsk People's Republic. In the Kupiansk direction, the attacks launched by operational tactical and dummy aviation, as well as artillery of the Zapad group of forces, have resulted in the neutralization of the Ukrainian manpower and military equipment close to to Krasnoye Pervoye, Novomlinsk, and Molchanovo of Kharkov region. The enemy losses were up to 20 Ukrainian servicemen, two armored fighting vehicles, three motor vehicles, D-20 howitzer, and one Gwosdika self-propelled artillery system. In the Kherson direction, the enemy losses were up to 30 Ukrainian servicemen, three motor vehicles, one Mstabi howitzer, and one Akatsa self-propelled artillery system. Operational tactical and dummy aviation, missile troops and artillery of the armed forces of the Russian Federation have neutralized 73 Ukrainian artillery units at their firing positions, manpower and military equipment in 93 areas. Ammunition depots of the 33rd Mechanized and 44th Artillery Brigades, as well as the 5th Brigade of the Ukrainian National Guard, have been hit close to Yampol of Donetsk People's Republic, Malaya Tokmachka and Novoselenoye of Zaporozhye region. Air defense facilities have shot down three projectiles launched by HIMARS MLRS. In addition, eight Ukrainian unmanned aerial vehicles have been destroyed near Zhovtnivoye of Kharkov region, Zaliman, Pshenichnoye, Kremennaya of Lugansk People's Republic, Kluchevoye of Donetsk People's Republic, and Pologi of Zaporozhye region.
In total, 455 airplanes, 242 helicopters, 5,015 unmanned aerial vehicles, 426 air defense missile systems, 10,711 tanks and other armored combat vehicles, 1,138 fighting vehicles equipped with MRLS, 5,462 field artillery cannons and motors, as well as 11,678 units of special military equipment have been destroyed during the special military operation. You can run on for a long time, run on for a long time, run on for a long time. Sooner or later God will cut you down, sooner or later God will cut you down. Tell that globalist liar, tell that Democrat writer, tell that rhino rambler, that nuclear war gambler, that backbiting United States politician, tell them all that God's gonna cut them down. Tell them all that God's gonna cut them down.